Doesn't that sound so relaxing? It's like white noise. Oh, and I have the windows open, so if you hear some birds, I'm sorry. I had to keep it open. It's a hot day. Not a hot day, but it's a warm day. I'm eating soup again, so I love it. Welcome back to another mukbang, you guys. I'm here to present you some more Vietnamese food. This time around, I have pho, um, but this is not the same pho that I had last time. This is actually pho ga, which is chicken pho. And it's a little different. I think it's a little different. Even the noodles are different sizes. So in addition to that, I have the papaya salad here and I have the banh mi, which is Vietnamese sandwiches. My absolute favorite. I got it from this place. Banh mi che kali. This place is my favorite place to get this guy. I love Lee sandwiches, but we can talk about Lee sandwiches another time just because you know, it's kind of like, we're kind of ashamed of it in a way, just because it's not authentic to us, whatever. It's a sandwich, I don't care. Um, this is iced coffee here, by the way, with condensed milk, and you know, you've seen that before at all these Vietnamese restaurants. Anyway, I'm gonna turn this off right now. I'm gonna take the lid off. It's really hot right now. So the reason why I'm not using that as my soup bowl is because I think people are kind of weirded out that I use this to eat my soup out of. I just thought it was kind of cool to have a clear, you know, a clear, a clear pot so you guys can see the ingredients. So instead, I'm actually going to eat it in this bowl, which is normally how it's served. Let's actually scoop some of this soup here. Oh my gosh, it smells like chicken noodle soup. So let me actually doctor this right now. You can put the chicken in first into the soup, but I like dark meat. This is dark meat, this is not chicken breast. I like dark meat and I actually like to leave it outside of the soup. You could do either or. You can eat it however you'd like. There's There aren't any rules really, but for me, I kind of like to leave it out because it has a dipping sauce here. You'll see. But if I do have chicken breast, I kind of put it in here. It's just easier to eat. All right, so my usual, let's do. All right, let's see here, just one more. I like my broth to be really limey. Limey. Don't be afraid to sriracha that up. Last but not least, the hoisin. All right, let's mix this up. And you're going to be hearing motorcycles, so sorry. All right, and really quick. I don't know if you can see the noodles are thicker for faga. And you could actually get the thinner noodles, but which I prefer, honestly, but I'll just leave it as it is. All right, my usual goodness, bean sprouts. Jalapenos, gotta have those. It smells amazing. I know not everyone uses these leaves. I've seen a lot of mukbangers eating pho and they don't really use these leaves. And that's okay too. To be honest with you, the flavor of basil and mint and all that good stuff, I think it's one of those 
it's those flavors that really, really take time to get used to. And I don't expe expect anybody to get used to that. Um, but if you are adventurous, I would, su I would suggest for you to just try it every single time. Um, you have pho. Uh... Oh, bomb. Let me taste the soup. Mmm. That is bomb. That's really good. A little bit more hot sauce. Can never go wrong. And these are some more things for this sandwich, but I'll add it later. Let's actually dig in real quick. Excellent. Chicken noodle soup. Soup for the soul. I swear it. No lie. Mmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this chicken might look funny to you, but it's actually boiled chicken. And they cut it into small pieces for you. <clears throat> but, um... I just like eating it separate from the, um, mm. from the soup, but there's so many bones. I love it. Mm. I'm still sweating anyway. Whatever, who cares? The reason why I actually like drinking this with these types of foods is because it can get spicy sometimes and the condensed milk really, really helps with that. So, all right guys, do you see this here? Beautiful papaya salad. That's beef jerky right there. Peanuts and some Vietnamese mint. And then we're going to pour this delicious sauce over it. Let's do that. My pet peeve is when the spoon actually falls into the soup. So let's avoid that. So what you want to do here is actually just mix up this whole thing. This is... um unripe papaya, which is okay with me. In my other mukbang, I know I talked about, <clears throat> talked a lot of crap about regular papaya because I hate ripe papaya. I hate the smell of it, but I do not mind it when it is unripe and it's crunchy. Just like this. See that there? Really delicious. Mm.
That sauce is savory, salty, savory. It pairs really well with the lightness and the crispiness of the papaya. And I love the beef jerky because it gives it kind of a nice texture. It's like you get that chewiness and you get that crunchiness all together. Incredible. I love it. All right, and let's do this guy here. This here is barbecue pork. And what you want to do, I asked for this separately. What you want to do is just pretty much add all of these things in here. This is what pretty much a Vietnamese sandwich looks like. So we got the pickled, the pickled carrots and daikon. And then we have cilantro, and then we have jalapenos. Just decorate it, make it look all pretty. Did you see there? That's pretty much what it looks like. So what we're gonna do is cut this in half. So you can actually see what's on the inside. Do you see that? Do you see how beautiful that looks? And it's got this delicious kind of mayo in there. Vietnamese people, you know what I'm talking about, that mayo makes the sandwich. You know that it does. It's incredible. It's like, I think it's uh, egg whites that, that's been whisked. Explain to me whatever it is. I'm not sure. I can't make it. I don't know how to make it. All right, let's actually take a bite of that sandwich, as you can see. Mmm. Mmm. Magnificent. Mm. Mm. Messy, messy. One of my favorite things. <clears throat> mm. Oh my god, I'm a hot mess. This food is good though. Mmm. If there, was, if there was any time 
that you'd be jealous of me. Today sh should be the day. Mmm. I straight up forgot that you were there. <clears throat> I'm telling you, this is this is the real deal here. So, just a little update for you guys. Yeah, I think I've mentioned this before, but I am graduating next month, so... Big deal. Huge. Huge in a way where I want it to be done with, and I don't want to have to show up to school anymore. I just don't like the driving. It's just a mess. And I don't want any more exams or any of those things. Not for a long while, at least, but... Yes, I am very excited, and... I am, I'm not even nervous about it. But it was funny, I was actually talking to a friend about graduating and, you know, walking down, you know, the aisle to get my diploma, just, oh, by the way, I don't want to walk. I know people are crazy about that. They are so confused as to why I do not want to walk um, at the graduation, you know, the ceremony. But it's just, it's not something I want to do. And it, it was never something that I intended on doing. But I mentioned this to somebody and they freaked out on me. A group of people actually. They were like, you're going to regret it. You're going to regret not ever, you know, walking down that, walking down to receive your diploma. They're like, you work so hard, you know. Why don't you just go? Why are you being so complicated? I was called complicated because I didn't want to walk.
I know I spent a lot of time at this university, but I mean, it was like, it's almost eight plus years that I was in college for. So it's been a long time. And I know that a lot of people think that that's a huge accomplishment and that I should celebrate that. Sure, I will celebrate. I will celebrate once it's all over. Maybe I'll get a group of people together and we can go out, have food and drinks and just celebrate. That's cool. But the whole walking thing, I don't... I'm just... It's just not me. And I... Before you even tell me that I should walk, just... I promise. I promise I will not regret it. I promise. And the only thing I regret <clears throat> was not living in a dorm at a university. Other than that, I don't need to be sitting out on the, in the sun for two hours while waiting for my name to be called. It's not because I'm trying to be too cool. It's just not my thing. Like I do not want to stand outside and take pictures with my cap and gown. Like that's just not something I want to do. I want to skip all of that and I just want to go straight to the party, you know? Now, <clears throat> listen, if my university threw a huge party afterwards, after having walked or um, gone through the ceremony, then I'm in, because you know me, if you give me free drinks, I'm there, like I'm first in line, like I would RSVP that shit, but it's just a bunch of traffic, getting in and out, finding parking, trying to find your family, you know? And a lot of people are like, no, you should just walk for your parents. You know, I'm sure they want to see you, you know, having accomplished what you've, you've done so far. I get that, but I genuinely do not want to walk. And I'm not going to do something for someone else just to make them happy because the hell, come on. I'm at that age now. I'm like, I'm tired. If I, if I can't do me, I definitely cannot do you. That's for sure. I love them, but come on, that's for them. That's not for me. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's why I feel the same way with weddings. Like, I would never have a wedding that my parents wanted. I would have it my way. And if you don't want to come, goodbye. I'll see you later. We'll have dinner next week. Mmm. Real quick. About these sandwiches. I'm really lucky that the one I bought today, the bread, the bread is soft. Sometimes the bread is not soft. It is so hard. It's like prison bread. And what happens is that when you're eating it, when you're chewing it, that kind of thick, intense bread, the dry bread, it actually scrapes at the, t uh, at the roof of your mouth and it kind of leaves it very sensitive. I don't know if anyone has experienced this, but be aware that sometimes when you get this sandwich, I don't know if it's the restaurant, I don't know if they give a shit, but they will give you stale bread. And that thing will hurt you. It, this is not Subway bread. This is uh, this is a baguette. It's totally different, you know. Yeah, this here scratches you. Hmm. But today, the gods are watching. They're helping me today. They knew to get me some fresh bread. <clears throat> you 
No, I love my parents. I actually feel really, I do feel kind of sad that I'm not walking for them. But listen, I will definitely get everyone together and we're going to celebrate. And maybe, just maybe I'll wear my cap and gown there. But I do not want to drive to the, to the school, try to find parking. I can't even get all my friends in. They only give you a specific amount of tickets, you know? So I'm like, what's the point? Let's meet up afterwards. <clears throat> and by the way, if you want to know, there are four kids in my family, including me. My oldest brother, he did not graduate from any college. He didn't even graduate from high school. That's another story. Now, the first person to graduate was my second oldest brother. And then my youngest sister was the second to graduate college. And now I'm the last one to finish. And to explain it, it pretty much was because I was working the whole entire time. Like, I just, I'm a workaholic. I left school behind. I didn't really care for it. I just, I just wanted to work. I wanted money, you know? Like, we didn't grow up in a rich family. We weren't devastatingly poor, but my, my parents weren't giving me any money, you know? So I, I, I've kind of had this, like, thing ingrained in me that, you know, if I want something, I have to work for it. And I didn't have... I didn't have enough money for me to live and go to school at the same time. So it's almost like I had to choose one and I chose work. That's why it took me so long to finish. <sighs> but now that I'm all right financially, I think it's much better. But that is the reason why it took me so long. But we're all good. We're okay. Mm, I love this chicken. Chicken. I know some people might be weirded out that it's yellow, the chicken, the chicken skin, but... I'm not sure if it has anything to do with the type of chicken they use, but... I'm not sure why it's yellow, but I'm just going to safely assume that it's because <clears throat> of the chicken they use. Mmm. I'm going to tell you something real funny. It's speaking of graduations, my sister's graduation, my mom is crazy. And I'll tell you why she's crazy. She is crazy. Well, my parents, my parents are very generous. They, they like to gift us with fancy things when we have, you know, major life events like that. Um, and they might even get me something I don't know but I don't want anything from them by the way um, I really don't but yeah so my sister's, gra sister's graduation which was I would say three or four years ago my mom she is so crazy she straight up straight up asked her if she wanted these two things for her graduation gift one do you want a new car you know, we can get you a new car, you know, I know you've been driving that one for a while, but let's get you, I don't know, something you want. So the car, right? The second option was, do you want to get plastic surgery? I'll pay for it. 
She's crazy. I, I was like, M my sister sent me a text message telling me this, and I can already like envision my mom asking her, and I was and I was so shocked. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, why would she ask you if you wanted a car or plastic surgery? And I asked her like, plastic sur surgery for what? Like, what specifically? And she goes, well, she wanted me to get a chin, like a new chin. A chin, literally. Listen. <laughs> when I heard that, I was like, oh, I cannot believe it. Not only did you make, like, my sister feel more insecure about, you know, what's going on here, you know, you've opened up a can of worms, I think. You really did. I was so shocked that she would ask that. Apparently, my mom thinks that my, my sister doesn't really have a chin. Like, it, I guess... We actually, me and my sister, we have a prominent thing where like if we put our neck back, we have like this extra skin, right? Which, I mean, I've come to not like care about it, but and my mom, my sister doesn't care either. But it's so crazy that my mom would mention that. And it just goes to show like how much she actually cares about the way we look. I mean, it's very superficial, but I just thought that was extreme. A new car! Plastic surgery! Which one do you want? She obviously went with the new car. She has a new car now. Um, like, really? Plastic surgery of the chin or whatever? I don't... I don't understand. And the reason why she's actually very cool with plastic surgery is because she had it herself. She had a facelift. Mm hmm and she lied to me about it or she lied to us about it she came home one time and there was this gauze wrapped around her head all the way around from her neck to the top of her head and spun several times around and I looked at her and I thought, oh my god, what happened to her? Like, that looks so dev- Her face was pulled back. I thought something was really wrong. But she had told us that she had this little rock inside of her head or something. And that they had to, um, they had to open up her head, right? Just to get that little rock out. I don't know why she was saying a rock, but she did. And I was so stunned because she didn't say anything and we didn't know she was- gonna do that and I just looked at her and thought she looked so unnatural and you could obviously now that I think about it you can notice how her face was pulled back so much and I thought I was so scared that her face was gonna stay like that but that was what she was going for that face that pulled back face pull it was scary and I believe and she's never actually told us that she had plastic surgery um, or a facelift or whatever I mean, I don't think I'm going to ever ask her. She still thinks that we're convinced that she just had some surgery on the head. No, she had plastic surgery because that shit healed up and her face was the same. I was like, why, why is your face looking like whiplashy? Like, why is it? <sighs> oh, mother, why do you care about these things? And I'm not stupid, like I know if she cares about the way we look, I feel that that's a reflection of the way she feels about herself. That's nothing new, we all kind of know that, you know? But my my mom, she, she had some self-image problems from what I remember. This is so good. I love the salad. Salad. Can't talk. Salad. I really want to know though, like, what is your stance on plastic surgery? Like, how do you feel about it? 
I go back and forth on it. Like, it's not something that I... I honestly feel like I don't have... A, like, a specific position on the subject. I don't know why. I just feel like one day I think it's okay, and the next day I'm all like, No, plastic surgery, don't do it. You're gonna look like another Korean pop star, you know? Like, don't do it. You're just gonna look like everyone else's idea of what beauty is, and that is very unnatural, right? But... If you ask me how I felt about it today, right now, I'm okay with it. I'm okay with my friends doing it. I'm okay if my mom wants to do it again. That is not my decision to make, and you have to understand that too. Uh, something like that is not something where we, we can't decide for others. I've always wondered that you know, attractive people, how they, how they usually tell other people, others that may not be as attractive as they are, to not get plastic surgery and that they are beautiful they are, the way they are. I've always gotten confused by that because I just feel that certain people are just not in the position to tell you not to get plastic surgery. If you really truly think that you want plastic surgery, and that's going to make you look the way you want. I just don't think that's, I don't know, I don't think that's right. It's, it's so, it's confusing. It's really confusing, but pretty much pretty people, you would think that, oh, they have it, they have it okay, right? They don't have, they don't have anything to worry about, but I don't think that's entirely true as well. Like I said, this is so complex, because even pretty people go under the knife, and they get things done, and guess what? they get addicted and they continue to do it because now it's made them even more beautiful and they're thinking, oh my gosh, I could be even prettier. And they'll go out of their way to do whatever it takes. Oh, I should have thought about this subject before I started talking about it, but... I'm thinking, I'm thinking. If you are looking into doing anything like that, I would just recommend looking at more, how do you say, non-surgical routes, such as dieting. Dieting goes a long way. You know, when you're losing weight, you do look different and you do feel different as well. Maybe changing lifestyle habits like or bad lifestyle habits such as drinking, smoking, any of those things could damage your skin, you know, all those, all those vices that we have. But I think that would be the best way to go about it. Maybe get a haircut. I don't know. Haircuts change the way a face looks. Do all those things. Listen, if none of those things make you happy, then I say do as you please. Go ahead. I will not tell you yes, I will not tell you no. I will, I will only talk in regards to myself when it comes to plastic surgery. Like, would I get it? You know, that's, I'm only opinionated when it comes to me. But if you want to do it, all right. I will support. But, I mean, it's okay for me to like, hey, think about it, you know, but I'm not gonna be mad at you if you actually do it. Like, just go for it. And sometimes the plastic surgery does look good, 
but it's like unnatural beauty, right? Because we're all aiming, aiming to be naturally beautiful. What the fuck is naturally beautiful? I don't know, but we're always aiming for that natural beauty. <sighs> that's a that's a really tough subject. I don't know. Tell me. I'm sure you guys have thoughts on this. Maybe if you've considered doing it, I don't know what your thought process is or how you feel on it, uh, feel about it. But listen, I could change my stance tomorrow. I, who knows? I think people are vain to some extent though. Some more than others. And there are people who just don't find the importance in physical beauty. I mean, who are you? What is your secret? Tell us how we can be okay with ourselves, you know? But I say for most of us, man, we're just bombarded with all these magazines and the media and just how you should be looking, etc., etc. The definition of beauty, because there really is no definition of beauty. Just to sum that up, don't let anybody tell you what you should and should not do, honestly. If you want it, go, go for it. But I ask that you just do your homework, or at least try other routes first, you know? You can go the natural way, you don't have to go under the knife. But listen, if that is something that you need, don't let me stop you. Don't let my beliefs stop you, because they don't matter in the bigger scheme of things. It's your life. If it's a mistake that you've made, then you will learn from it. I mean, it's going to be permanent, but you will learn from it. All right, guys, that was a long talk, but it was so nice to hang out with you. I will see you next time, um, and I'll be uploading my FAQ very soon. Love you. Bye.